So we recognize the gift that we've been given. And we also recognize the responsibility that it is to have that. And so we begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, let us feel your compassion more readily during these days when by your gift we have known it more fully so that those you have freed from the darkness of error may cling more firmly to the teachings of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip. Get up and head south on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert route. So he got up and set out. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, that is, the queen of the Ethiopians in charge of her entire treasury, who had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit said to Philip, Go and join up with that chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I, unless someone instructs me? So he invited Philip to get in and sit with him. This was the scripture passage he was reading. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent. So he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, Justice was denied him. Who will tell of his posterity? For his life is taken from the earth. Then the eunuch said to Philip in reply, I beg you, about whom is the prophet saying this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with this scripture passage, he proclaimed Jesus to him. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, Look, there is water. What is to prevent my being baptized? Then he ordered the chariot to stop. And Philip and the eunuch both went down into the water, and he baptized him. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, but continued on his way rejoicing. Philip came to Azotus and went about proclaiming the good news to all the towns 
until he reached Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm will be, Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Bless your God, you peoples. Loudly sound his praise. He has given life to our souls and has not let our feet slip. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Hear now, all you who fear God, while I declare what he has done for me. When I appealed to him in words, praise was on the tip of my tongue. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Blessed be God, who refused me not my prayer or his kindness. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia. Spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Please join me for the intention for this Mass, for a deeper commitment to care for our common home. In the readings today, we hear the continuation of the faith going out. We hear at first about that eunuch from the court of Candace, the one that was in charge of her treasury. He's out on this desert road between Jerusalem and Gaza. He's reading Isaiah, and the Spirit moves the Apostle to come out to him. Philip, go out by this desert road. Go, see that man in the chariot. And so he runs to him, finds him reading that Isaiah passage. And then asks him, do you understand what you're reading? He says, how can I, unless someone explains it to me? And so that's where we find ourselves in so many ways. Not always recognizing what our faith is all about. Not always recognizing where we're being moved towards, or where we're moving, being moved away from. And so in this Easter season, we recognize that it's through God that we are called. It's through God we are drawn. That no one comes to the Father except through the Son. Because he's the only one who has seen the 
the Father. And as Jesus said elsewhere, I will not lose anyone. The Father does not want anyone to be lost. And so we are reminded with great joy, especially in this Easter season, that God wants all of us to be open, like this man, this foreigner, this official from another royal court, who knew something important was there, knew some truth was touching his heart, where he was moved by the Spirit, and then by the Spirit through Philip, opened his world, opened his mind, shut his mouth, opened his ears so he could hear where God was leading him, until he was able to speak those words. Look, there's water over there. What's to prevent me from being baptized? And so if it was only, if we had that same joy to be able to recognize how God is working in our lives, and he works in our lives each and every day, but sometimes we take that as our own doing. We sometimes see things as coincidence, but God works in mysterious ways. Some days we might be the Philip that is sent out to open the scripture to someone, to show how to live a good life, how to be a good Christian, that people will recognize that we are Christians by our love, that we are a people of the way who led the, the church to expand. But sometimes we're also that eunuch who says, we don't know, I don't know. How can I understand? Unless somebody tells me. So that's what is so important about all of us in this age, and especially as we move in our church and the world into this age, missionary age that we are now in. We're called to be bold, to be open to the Spirit as it moves. So we go running to wherever we need to be so we can open up the scriptures. We can open up opportunities where people are called to their faith in a way they could never imagine. And by doing so, we will also be blessed. We will also then be moved in other territories where we then proclaim that Jesus is Lord. Let us stand for our petitions. We pray for the church, that in this age of missionary, that we recognize our sacred duty to be open to receive God as that bread of life, and we take out his story, his salvation, his glory to all we meet. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick among us, those who are kept home out of fear, out of prudence, that they may be given comfort and healing, and always know that God is with them. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, and for those who die, will die today. In a special way, we pray for Elsa Ver, friend of John Hillenbrand, that she may see the face of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those prayers that are in the quiet of our heart, the ones that we know to speak, but those ones that we don't even know how to put to words, that God may give us healing and comfort and guidance. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. God, you who call us out of ourselves to go and evangelize, let us be following the example of your son Jesus, who went to the marginalized, who went to the edges of society, all to proclaim your glory. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. O oh, come for us, our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, Grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to claim you, O Lord. But at this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more. The Lamb, once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he's betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Blaise our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, Formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace. I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. 
Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to the newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us go out where the Spirit is moving us to make contact with those in our lives those who might be new to us, strangers, that the God will give us an opportunity to share our faith with them in words and in deeds, but also all those people in our lives, the ones we can often take for granted. They might live with us. We might share the same wedding bed. We might share meals across the table. We might sit next to each other, TV, but we really don't open up and show the love that we have been given and so let us be joyful in all that we do. Let us call our neighbors. Let us call fellow Christians that we haven't talked to or seen. To let them know that we are thinking about them. To help alleviate loneliness. As many people are still not able to come out of their surroundings. All out of prudence. All out of safety. So let us be that joyful person that goes out meeting to where the Spirit leads us. So we can always proclaim that we are brothers and sisters in Christ and that we can open up the scripture in so many ways by just the way we show our love for others. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Go make a difference, we can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference, we can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world.